I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. I wonder how he could love of me, a sinner condemned unclean. How marvelous, how wonderful am my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. For me it was in the garden He prayed not my will but thine He had no tears for his own griefs But fed blood of blood for mine How marvelous, how wonderful And my song shall ever be how marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. In pity angels beheld him and came from the world of life to comfort him in the sorrows he bore on my soul that night. How marvelous, how wonderful am my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. He took my sins and my sorrows, he made them his very own. He bore the burdens of Calvary, he bore for my side alone. How marvelous, how wonderful am my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. When with the ransomed in glory, His face I at last shall see. T'will be my joy through the ages to sing of his love for me. How marvelous, how wonderful am my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. How marvelous, how wonderful am my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Um, good morning. I, I obviously like verse 3, that's why in the middle of verse 4 I went back to singing verse 3. So it's the last Sunday of Easter, next week's Pentecost, and it's also the um, Jubilee weekend, and um, just to remind you, next Sunday from noon onwards, so you do have time to come from the, to the service here, then go across to Brendan Ingle Way with your picnic uh, for the Jubilee picnic that's been held over there. And the other things coming up is uh, Focal Minister Commissioning um, is going to be on Wednesday 29th of June. That's where 
uh, myself, Lynn, and Peter will be commissioned to the role of focal minister as we move, as Sheffield's moving to a new way of being the Anglican Church um, and sort of encouraging much more the talents and abilities of all you people to, to push this, uh, this fo church forward rather than just relying on a priest and as overworking them. And um, the other notice I've got is the St. Thomas Fund, just to set an update on where we're at. You remember we need about £60,000 to, um, to do all the repairs that are necessary there. Um, that probably means that we need to collect about 30000 um, and then get grants to match from that. We're currently over 15000 £15,671.56 as of Thursday um, for that. So we're, we're halfway to what our target in terms of collecting ourselves is before we can get grants. Um, so keep praying about for that um, because God can provide. And I think that's all the notices I've got for this week. I'm just looking if anybody's desperate to give a notice. No. That's good. So let's um, spend a few moments in, in quiet as we still our hearts in the presence of the living God. The light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. And we're going to sing his praise by singing all hail the power of Jesus' name. I'm going to have to learn how to play a keyboard because all these hymns I keep choosing are better on the keyboard. But. Oh, hail the power of Jesus' name that angels Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him, crown him, crown him, crown him, Lord of all. Crown him, ye martyrs of our God, who from his altar. Extol him in whose path ye trod And crown him, crown him, crown him, crown him, Lord of all Ye seed of Israel's chosen race, ye ransomed Spread your trophy, by his grace, and crown him, crown him, crown him, crown him, Lord of all. Sinners whose love can never forget the Spread your trophies at his feet and crown him, crown him, crown him, crown him, Lord of all. Let every kindred, every tribe on this terrestrial ball. 
To Him all majesty ascribe and crown Him, crown Him, crown Him, crown Him, Lord of all. Oh, that with yonder sacred throng we add His feet. Join in the everlasting song and crown him, crown him, crown him, crown him, Lord of all. If you like to sit, and um, I apologize for the confusion verses mixing things up a bit we um, come before a God who is full of grace and so we can be confident as we now come to our time of confession The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith. And we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And may Almighty God have gives all who truly repent have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm not having a good day. All those you should have been us, as I'm not a priest. Amen. The, um, the prayer for today, the collect. Risen, ascended Lord, as we rejoice at your triumph, fill your church on earth with power and compassion that all who are estranged by sin may find forgiveness and know your peace. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we're going to respond to that compassion by declaring that everyone needs compassion, but our God is mighty to save. Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, kindness of the Savior, the hope of nations. And Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, 
He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. So take me as you find me. All oh, my fears and failures. Fill my life again. Get my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. And Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine light, shine light, and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine light, and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. If you'd like to sit. Because um, Diane's going to come and give our first reading and then Muriel. We'll come and do our second. This reading is taken from Acts chapter 16, verses 16 to 34. Once, when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune-telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned round and said to the spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. When her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, These men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. 
At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, we are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his household were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading is taken from John chapter 17, reading from 20 to 26. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who would believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me, and I have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you love me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you know in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, um, Muriel and Diane. Um, let's pray. Father, as I speak, may we hear your words and allow them to make the changes in us that will bring us to eternal life. Amen. Well, as I say, we're to, towards the end of Easter. Next week's Pentecost and then a um, few, few weeks' time we'll have um, Trinity Sunday which is, isn't the favorite Sunday for preachers uh, because they have to try and explain the Trinity, which uh, none of us has quite managed. So if anybody really understands what the Trinity is and how to explain it, if you'd like to let me know, you can do the sermon that week. But actually today's passage from John takes it to another level if you think the Trinity is difficult to understand just think about what Jesus prayed that they may all be one as you father are in me and I am in you may they also be in us
That's truly mind-blowing. That truly, for me, is difficult to comprehend and understand what it means. How does that work? How can I be one with God? How can I be one with you? Yet this is a prayer from God the Son, led by God the Spirit to God the Father. And if you believe prayers are answered at all, this prayer will have been answered. So somehow this is true. Somehow we are connected to God and to each other. We're not just individuals. Sometimes, something underneath it all connects us together. A bit like fungi is my best example of it. So if you walk out of the woods, you'll see some fungi. You'll see trees and plants and there'll be some fungi spread about here and there. And they look as if they're individual pieces. But they are connected. Under the ground, each fungi is connected. But more than that, the other plants around communicate with each other through that fungi connection they've, they've discovered in science. I love science. It just blows your mind. And in the same way, we are connected. And through us, the world is connected to the living God. But what does that mean for us? It's hard enough for us to understand it, but what does it actually mean? Well, when Jesus prays that we are one, he's not praying that we stop being individuals. God is God the Father and God the Son and God the Spirit. They're separate and yet together one. And that's true for us as well. He's not asking us to stop being who we are meant to be and to be some sort of merged identity but that we use our own abilities, our own gifts to benefit us all. That we think in those terms, that we are not purely individuals, but we are one, one with God and one with God's people with a calling to make a difference in this world, to carry on the work of God the Son. To carry on showing the love for the world that the Father has. It's a big calling. And to so much sense, it fills us with trepidation. But in our Acts reading, we see that um, after being severely beaten and thrown into prison, Paul and Silas praise God. They sing hymns and they pray. I think they could do that because they'd come to understand the truth or come to know the truth, I doubt they understood it, that they were connected to the one God. That his life and his power was there with him as much in prison as it was when Paul commanded the 
demon to go out of him. The girl. And that's why they could praise God. That's why when the jail shook and they could have escaped, they stayed. That's why Paul shouted out to the jailer not to kill himself. Because they knew that they were God's people. That they were connected to God. Somehow that I don't understand and doubt I ever will. And so are we. Each one of us. We are connected to the living God. His prayer is that we are one with him and with each other. And our job is to live that way. Showing the love that God the Father has for the world and for us. And as we do that, more people will see God's love. And more people will be joined into that unity with God. And God's kingdom will begin to grow in this area. And his purposes be fulfilled through us. As we think about that, mind-blowing idea (laughs) that we could be one with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I'm going to sing Be Still for the presence of the Lord because sometimes it's not about trying to understand it but just accepting it. of the Lord the Holy One is here come bow before him now with reverence and fear in him no sin We stand on holy ground Be still for the glorious of the Lord The Holy One is He Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with render he is crowned. How awesome is the sight Shining all around Be still For the power of the Lord Is moving in this place He comes to cleanse 
hands and heal to minister His grace. No word too hard for Him. In faith receive from Him. Be still for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. Be still for the power. Be still for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. He comes to cleanse and heal to minister His grace. No word too hard for Him. In faith receive from Him. Be still for the power of the Lord. Is moving in this place. We're going to um, declare that we believe in that God who is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And that we also believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church by saying the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. If you'd like to sit as we come before that powerful God with our prayers and intercessions. And there's um, a response in these prayers where I say, we are your people. If we all join together and say, and you are our God. We are your people and you are our God. Let us pray to the God who gives us so much and loves us so completely. 
we pray for a fresh outpouring of your Spirit in all areas of the church till our lives are so changed for good that people notice and are drawn to seek you for themselves. We are your people and you are our God. We pray for godly leaders and advisors all over the world and for the courage to speak out against injustice and evil. We are your people and you are our God. We pray for those affected by our behavior and our conversation that we may in future encourage one another by all we say and do. We are your people, and you are our God. We pray for those as yet unborn, that the good news will reach them too. We pray for those who have rejected God because of the behavior of his followers. We pray for all who have lost their way. We are your people, and you are our God. We pray for the dying, especially those who are unprepared or frightened. Welcome into your kingdom those who have died in faith, that they may live with you forever. We are your people, and you are our God. Thank you, Lord, for the new life that you have enabled us to live. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we'll carry on in prayer by praying that God's kingdom is shown in this area by saying together the diocesan prayer. Living God, Jesus calls his followers to seek first your kingdom. Renew us as we make your love known. Release us to share freely together a mission and rejuvenate us to be fruitful in your service. Give us courage, wisdom, and compassion that strengthened with the grace of the Holy Spirit, we may, as the Diocese of Sheffield, both flourish and grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. And to conclude this time of intercession, we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our final hymn today reminds us that it's in Christ alone that we trust. In Christ alone, my hope. 
hope is found He is my strength, my strength My song, this cornerstone This solid ground Firm from the fierce destroyed and stone Eyes of love, what depths of thee, when fears are still, when striving see, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of alone who took on flesh fullness of God in helpless pain this gift of love and righteousness scorned by the ones he came to save on that cross as Jesus died the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin on him was laid here in the death of Christ I The ground his body lay light of the world by darkness rain burst him forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose and as he stands in victory, sin's curse has lost its grip on me. For I am in, and he is mine, brought with the precious blood of Christ. in life no fear in death this is the power of Christ in me from life's first cry to final breath Jesus commands my destiny no power scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he return or call me home here in the power of Christ I'll make Christ the good shepherd 
who laid down his life for the sheep, draw you and all who hear his voice to be one flock within one fold. And the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, thank you. And um, as always, there's tea and coffee at the back for you. God bless you all.